Hi there, one of the most disliked videos on my YouTube channel is my review of the Libra H2O. I posted that video a few months ago, earlier this year, and the comments section of that video are very unforgiving. There are several people out there who are very angry with me for some of the complaints I had about that Libra H2O device. Looking back now, I definitely think I might have been a little bit harsh on that device, but all the complaints I had, I still stand by all of that. And when the Libra 2 was announced just a little while ago, I was super excited to get my hands on this device to see if they fixed all those issues I had with the original Libra H2O. Now, spoiler alert, they didn't fix all the issues I had with this device. In today's video, I'm doing a deep dive into the Libra 2 that just came out. We'll start by talking about the buying experience of this device. Then after that, we'll talk about the features and specs. And then lastly, I share my personal thoughts about the device as a whole. Let's jump into it. Now, starting with the buying experience of the Libra 2, the starting price of this device is 179 US dollars. That's actually a $10 increase from the previous model. One thing I do appreciate though, is there's two color options, a black model and a white model. So you can choose the exact color that you'd like. Now you do have the option of buying a $40 sleep cover for the Libra 2 if you want, that has some more fun color options if you want to spice it up a little bit. But as you'll see later in this video, I don't think you actually need a case with this device. It's great the way it is. Now, one thing I actually do appreciate quite a bit from Kobo is they increase the standard storage capacity. Last time they had Libra H2O, they started that storage capacity at eight gigabytes. With the Libra 2, you have 32 gigs, no option to change that. They just give that to you as a standard configuration. Personally speaking, I don't think most people will need that much storage, but it's really cool to see that they're making that the standard offering. You don't have to pay extra to get that extra capacity. Now next up, let's actually talk about the build quality of this device. The Libra 2 is very, very similar to the Libra H2O. Starting with the back of the device, it has this rubbery texture to it with this textured design. It's the same exact pattern as the Libra H2O. And I do have some thoughts about this textured back. I don't like it because crumbs and dust do get stuck in here pretty easily. It's also very fingerprint prone. You can see all the fingerprints and smudges from your fingers, especially if you have oily hands from a beard oil or anything like that. It shows very clearly on the back of the device. But one thing I do like about the back of the device, it's very grippy. Unlike all my other e-readers, Kobo does a very good job of making it so you don't have to buy a case with your device. I can hold this device and comfortably feel like I'm not going to drop it when I'm reading my book. I can't say the same for some other devices out there. This is really, really nice. I don't like that it gets dirty, but I do appreciate the functionality of it. Now, while we're on the back of the device, let me also talk about this power button. I really love this power button. I loved the power button on the previous generation, and they kept that the same on the Libra 2. It's a round button. It's on the back of the device, and you can press it down very nicely. It's clicky. It's just a great button, and I wish more e-readers implemented a design like this. It reminds me of the Kindle Voyage. That device also has a great power button similar to this. It's a standard that I really wish would come back in today's world. My biggest complaint about this power button, though, is the placement of it. I really wish they moved this from the left side to the right side, to the same side where the page turn buttons were. I really wish that power button was there on that same side, but instead they kept it where it was with the Libra H2O on the other side. Now moving on to the front of the device, there's actually a few design changes over here that I wanna talk about. Firstly, it looks a lot more clean from the previous model. The previous model had this jagged edge to it almost where it curved, then went flat, and there was this weird line going down the right side of the device. With this Libra 2 model, you have a clean, modern, sleek curve going down the side of the device. It just looks so much cleaner. You don't have that edge there anymore. Now, as much as I appreciate that new modern design, they didn't really change much else. The device is still very plasticky from the front. I don't like that very much. It ruins the premium element of the device. It just feels a lot cheaper than it needs to be because they're using a plastic material. And then also, the glass display is not flush 
with the front of the device. It's actually indented just a little bit into the plastic. So you rub your finger over it, you see that little hump on the sides, the bezels over there. And that's very, very unfortunate. Most modern devices now have a flush glass going all the way through the front of the device. And this device does not have it. It really makes it feel a lot less premium because of that missing feature. Now the other major thing on the front of the device that I want to talk about for a few moments here are these page turn buttons. This is a really hot topic for me. On my previous review of the Libra H2O, this was my biggest complaint. These page turn buttons were driving me crazy. So I'm really interested to talk about now this new design of the page turn buttons on the Libra 2. I am happy to report that they did do some design changes here, but there are still quite a few issues. The design is no longer as rectangular as the previous model that made it look much more rounded. It just does feel a little bit easier to click down on. They do feel a bit more clicky compared to the previous ones. I do like the way it looks. I do like the roundedness. It does make it look a little nicer and it does feel a bit better to press. However, the biggest complaint I had about the Libra H2O was it wouldn't press all the way in certain areas of the buttons. And I have the same exact issue on my Libra 2. I spent a lot of time questioning this and I think I figured out what they're doing wrong. Let me show you in detail what I think is happening here. The first thing I did was actually get my Kindle Oasis. The Kindle Oasis, in my opinion, has the best page turn buttons out there. Check out my video on that that I talk about in detail. But those page turn buttons are great, so I wanted to use that device as my control. I went to those page turn buttons and I pressed them several times to figure out what makes them so good. And I think I figured it out. When you press the Kindle Oasis page turn button on the top of the button, the middle of the button, and the bottom of the button, each section of that button has a click point. What I mean by click point is you can actually press down on each section of that button, it'll register a click. And it's very, very important because depending how you're reading, which angle you're reading at, if you're in bed or moving around or just pressing the button a different way, you will never press the button at the same spot. Usually you'll be moving it around every time you read. So it's really important the button works no matter which way you press it. On the Libra series, it's not quite the same. When you press the button on the top, it works. When you press the button in the middle, it works. But when you press the button towards the center of the device, it doesn't work. It's missing that third click point it only has two click points in the button for each one. For the top button, it's missing the bottom click point, and for the bottom button, it's missing the top click point. Basically, where the buttons are closest together, both of those two click points are missing, and when you press in that area, depending how you're reading, it may not work when you press the button. This sounds like such a stupid small detail, but it's actually incredibly frustrating when you're reading. You kind of have to push really hard on this button, and you aren't sure why it's working. You have to readjust your finger, then it finally works. It's just one of those small annoyances I don't want to deal with when reading a book. I want to just enjoy reading a book. I don't want to have to deal with a button not working. And on this Libra 2, I still have that problem just the same as my Libra H2O. These buttons are a small improvement from the previous model. They are a bit nicer to press because of the new design. And the functionality is still there. If you just press the button in a more careful manner, they work just fine, but they just aren't the best buttons out there. I I find that kind of annoying. Now putting those page turn buttons aside, one thing I don't find annoying is the new display they're using on the Libra 2. It has a seven inch 300 PPI resolution, same exact size and resolution of the previous model, but they're using the new E-Ink Kartra 1200 model display panel. And you can definitely see a difference when looking at this device. From the second I turned this device on, I saw a noticeable difference with the quality of the screen. It's really hard to explain the resolution is exactly the same, but it just looks so much more crisp. The contrast is nicer. It's definitely a more HD looking display from the previous model and all my other e-readers. It also still has that warm light temperature control, which is really, really handy. It should be a standard feature now for everyone. It's a really important feature to have in reading at night. And one thing I do appreciate about all the Kobos is you can quickly adjust the brightness of the display by using a handy shortcut, sliding your finger up and down the left side of the screen. That 
that's really, really handy. The display on this device is fantastic. Now there is no ambient light sensor on this device. So you have to adjust the brightness at your own time using the settings or that shortcut I just talked about. And also they did add a new feature called dark mode to the Libra 2. This apparently was not a feature of the Libra H2O. Because of the new HD panel they have on the screen, they're able to access dark mode now. Deep in the settings, it's kind of hidden away, but you do have that option, turn it on. When you open a book up, it inverts the colors. It's really, really nice to have that option now. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the speed of the Libra 2. And I have to say, I was kind of hoping it'd be a tad bit faster than before, but overall, it's the same. I was really hoping that because of this new display, page turns and animations would just look a bit quicker, but in reality, it's almost exactly the same speed as the previous generation. Kobo's always been really good about the software of their device, so even though the device speed has not changed from the previous model, I don't have any major complaints about this. It would have been nice to have a few small speed improvements here and there, but again, Kobo is really good at this, so the way it is right now is just fine. Now, one thing they did change that I think is a pretty big deal for a lot of people is they replaced micro USB with USB C. This is a very, very welcome change. It's one of the big things that I was hoping for in this Libra 2 model, and they did bring it over. It's really nice to see Kobo finally replacing micro USB across their entire product lineup, and the Libra 2 getting it is a big deal. It does come with the USB C cable, it does not come with that charging brick, though, so you have to have that already, or you can plug it into your computer if you'd like, or you can just use your existing USB chargers from your laptop, phone, or iPad, whatever you already have. Those cables work just fine. Honestly speaking, though, we don't really charge e-readers too much anyway. This device has a battery that will last you several weeks at a time. So charging the device is something we don't have to do very often anyway. Now, a few other notable features that I want to talk about regarding the Libra 2. It has a rotation feature, which I really, really love. It has this rotation sensor, so you can change the orientation, flipping it, depending which hand you're using it in, and the whole screen will rotate. Very, very snappy. I do like that it's included. One thing they also added is Bluetooth support for audiobooks. There is now a Bluetooth settings section in the settings. You can connect your Bluetooth headphones or you can go to the audiobook store and download audiobooks directly to your device. I never use this feature, not a big deal for me. I like using my phone for my audiobooks, but for some people, this might be very important. The Libra 2 is also still water resistant, even though Libra H2O is no longer the name of the device, it still has the H2O water resistance. So you can still comfortably read this device near water, which is really nice. One other thing I should mention and the device is 20 grams heavier from the previous model. I don't think it's a big deal unless you hold it side by side. Most people won't even know the difference. All right, here are my thoughts about the Libra 2 device. There are two major upgrades I feel this device got that are worth noting. The USB-C charging, which is very convenient, and also the new e-ink Kartra 1200 display. Looking at this device is so crispy. The text is just so nice to look at. Putting those upgrades aside though, I really wish they did a few other things to this new generation. I really wish they addressed the page turn button issue. I feel like they put a band-aid fix on it, but they didn't really address the main issue that's still there. That is really, really frustrating. And I also really wish they did an update to the build quality of the device. This plasticky material just does not feel nice to me. I really like reading on a more premium device, at least making a glass or a flush front display. That would have been really nice to have. Too. Putting those complaints aside, this device is still a really good deal. For the price you're paying, you're getting all the same features and functionality as a high-end Kindle Oasis, for example, at a massive discounted price. So for that purpose, you're getting a great deal of a device over here. Definitely more bang for your buck with the Libra 2. But to get that better bang for your buck, you're losing out on some of the nice-to-have features and the more premium feeling of an e-reader. For me personally, I would rather pay a little bit more for a device that makes me feel like I'm holding a high quality device. This device, for some people, will be a perfect device in terms of functionality. If you don't care about premium build quality, if you don't care about having to press the page turn buttons in a very specific place, you will love this device. It will work well for most people. But for someone like me who's a techie, just not for me. I can't really recommend buying it for people like that. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Am I being too harsh on this Libra 2, leave a comment down below. I really hope I'm not getting as many angry comments as last time, but hey, if you disagree with me, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Another device I would recommend checking out is actually the Kobo Clara HD. 
It's the device just below the Libra 2. That device is still a great deal right now for what you're getting, even though it hasn't been updated yet. Link for my full review on that device on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.